Hello, let's discuss quadratic equations today. What are quadratic equations? Equation which has three basic criteria. One is the highest degree of the equation has to be 2. The number of terms in the equation have to be 3. And the total number of variables in the equation has to be limited to only 1. Let's take a couple of examples. x square minus x minus 6 equals 0. Now that is a quadratic equation x square minus 5x equals minus 6. This also is a quadratic equation. x square minus y minus 6 equals 0. Now this does not. Why? Because this has two variables. There is an x and there is an y. So this is not a quadratic equation. Let's look at the last example. x square minus 6 minus x equals 2x minus 3. Now this has more than three terms. But still it's a quadratic equation. Why? Because minus x and 2x are the same terms. So it can be merged into 1. And minus 6 and minus 3 can also be merged into 1. So the total number of minimum terms will be 3 in this case. So this also is a quadratic equation. Let's look at the methods of solving a quadratic equation. The first method is the splitting or factorization method. Let's take an example. x square minus x minus 6 equals 0. So in this case, how do we go ahead? The coefficient of x square and the coefficient of the term which does not have x have to be multiplied. So it will be 1 into minus 6 will be minus 6. Now this minus 6 has to be broken in such a manner so that we get the middle term which is minus 1. How do we do it? Now 6 has two factors, 2 and 3. So here the product of plus 2 and minus 3 is minus 6 and the sum of plus 2 and minus 3 is minus 1. So we get what we wanted. Hence, the equation will come down to x minus 3 into x plus 2, which gives us the answers x equals 3 and x equals minus 2. How do we go ahead with the second one? So, x square minus 5x equals minus 6. How do we solve it? On the similar lines, it will give us x minus 3 into x minus 2, which will result in x equals to 3 and 2. There is another method of solving the same problem. This is called the discriminant method. Let us understand this because it's a more technical method. All equations have to be brought down to the form of ax square plus bx plus c. Now let's write the same equation back, x square minus x equals 6. Now this is not in the standard form, so we have to bring it down to the standard form. The standard form will be x square minus x minus 6 equals 0. So in the standard form, all the terms come on one side of equals and the other side is 0. Now let's try and relate the two. Now here, ax square plus bx plus c, x square minus x minus 6. So a becomes 1, b becomes minus 1 and c becomes minus 6. Now let's go ahead and solve it. There is something called a determinant here. Determinant is nothing but b square minus 4ac. Now a, b, c as the same we just talked about. How do we find out the roots? Now there are two roots normally in an equation. The first root typically is called alpha which is nothing but minus b plus root over the determinant whole thing divided by 2a and the same way beta which is the second root will become minus b minus of the determinant root of determinant divided by 2a. So this gives us alpha and beta. If we start putting the values of a, b, c we get alpha is 1 plus 5 by 2 and beta is 1 minus 5 by 2. Now let's look at how can we use the determinant method to identify the nature of the roots. Let's say determinant which is b square minus 4ac we have to find the root of the same square root of the same in order to get to alpha and beta. So if this b square minus 4ac is negative, then root will become imaginary. If it is positive, then the root is real root. Suppose let's look at another case. If b square minus 4ac is a whole square, if it's a whole square, the root of a whole square will become a normal number, a rational number. So the root will be rational. Whereas if this is not a perfect square, then the roots become irrational in nature. There is a third case, if this b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now in that case, if you look, if you go back to the equation, alpha will be minus b by 2a and beta will also be minus b by 2a. So both the roots will become equal. So if determinant is 0, the roots become equal. Let's look at a different angle to it. What will be the sum of the roots? So sum of the roots here, okay, alpha plus beta. Let's go back to the equation. We have the determinant cancelling out. So the total becomes minus b by a. So that is the sum of the roots. Similarly, the product of the root will become c upon a. So there is a sum of the root and there is a product of the root. 
if we go back to the original equation, say ax square plus bx plus c equals 0, if we divide the entire thing by a, so it will become x square plus b by ax plus c by a equals 0. So the equation can also be written as x square minus the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots equal to 0. Let's look at the difference of the roots. So alpha minus beta. Alpha minus beta whole square is equal to alpha plus beta whole square minus 4 alpha beta which gives us that the alpha minus beta whole square is nothing but square of sum of the roots minus 4 times product of the roots. So this gives us difference of the roots. Let's look at an example where we can apply what all we have learnt. So let's take an example here. Product of the current age of a person and the age after 5 years is 66. How do we make an equation? So suppose the x is the age of the person right now. So x plus 5 is the age after 5 years. So x into x plus 5 will give us 66. This will turn into an equation which is x square plus 5x minus 66 equals 0. Solving it, we can get x equal to 6 and x equal to minus 11. Going ahead, let's take another example. Sum of a number and its reciprocal is 10 upon 3. So how do we solve it? So number is x, so its reciprocal naturally becomes 1 upon x and this will total to 10 upon 3. So x plus 1 by x equals 10 upon 3. Let's solve it. x square plus 1 minus 10x by 3 is equal 0. So solving further we get 3x square minus 10x plus 3 equals 0. This gives us an answer of x equal to 3 and x equal to 1 by 3. Let's take another example. Sum of the square of two consecutive positive even numbers is 100. So there are certain things here. Consecutive positive even numbers. So even numbers can be x and the numbers can also be taken as x and x plus 2. It can also be taken as x minus 1 and x plus 1. So that x is an odd number and x minus 1 and x plus 1, both of them are even numbers. So x plus 1 whole square plus x minus 1 whole square should be 100. Solving this, we get 2x square minus 98 equals 0. So we get x two roots, x is 7 and x is minus 7. Now let's go back to the question. It says two consecutive positive even numbers. So minus 7 is not an option here. So the obvious options are 6 and 8, which is x plus 1 and x minus 1. Let's take another example. 24 rupees is divided equally amongst a set of children so that they get whole numbers in their pockets. Now, let's assume that there are two less people in that set of children. Then they get one rupee more than what they were getting earlier. So how do we solve it? So let's suppose 24 is a rupee and it divides by x minus 2, which is the new number of children, will be 1 more than 24 upon x. So 24 upon x minus 2 is 1 more than 24 upon x. This gives us an equation of 24x minus 24x plus 48 equals x square minus 2x. Solving, we get x equal to minus 6 and 8. Other way around, how can we solve it? 24 has to be divided amongst the set of children. So what are the factors of 24? 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 12. We see that 6 and 8 normally become very close to each other. So 24 upon 6 is 4 and 24 upon 8 is 3. So the difference is 1. So we can very clearly say that the numbers are 8 and 6. Now let's look at some special cases. Alpha beta is nothing but the product which is 1. So what does this tell us? This tells us if the product of the roots is 1, then one root has to be the reciprocal of the other. Let's take another case. If the root alpha is equal to negative of beta. Then if we add the two, the sum will be zero. So if we from the equation we get that the sum is zero, then one root has to be negative of the other. Let's look at the third case. Suppose a plus b plus c, which is the three coefficients, total up to zero. Now let's take an example. 251 x square plus 23 x minus 274 equals zero. Now, if we go and solve this question by the normal method of factorization or the determinant method, then it will be too huge a calculation. So we go back to a plus b plus c equals 0. We see that that is perfectly fitting in. So we can very clearly say that the roots are 1 is one root and c upon a is the second root which is minus 274 upon 251. That's the second root. So very easily we can solve such questions by applying such special cases here. I think we can go ahead and solve a lot more questions in quadratic equations to polish ourselves here.